Yeah. You can. Okay. All right. And okay. we are rolling and we're recording. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's meeting of the Jones Library Board of Trustees. Thank you for coming. I'm going to ask you to indicate your presence verbally. Lee Edwards. Present. Farah. Sorry. Sorry, here. Here you go. Tammy. Tammy. Hear me? Barely. Oh. Okay, wow. I just heard, I just heard you. And uh, Austin Sarah is here. Uh, we are going to shuffle the agenda a little bit this morning. Uh, I have to leave at 9.45. Uh, a quorum of the board is four. So when I leave, there will no longer be a quorum. We're going to have to adjourn. So what I would like to do is to propose that we go to the president's report first, which will involve a discussion of a proposed MOA with the town. And we then go to the report of the PPP, which would be with focus us on the library director's um, evaluation form. Uh, if we have time after that, uh, we can, uh, among other things, take public comment. Though I just want to let everybody know we may not have time to do that. Okay, uh, so we're going to skip the approval of the minutes. We're going to skip for now public comment. Because of uh, Bob Pam's resignation, we need to uh, shuffle some committee assignments. So uh, what I am proposing is that the Buildings and Facilities Committee going forward be uh, Farah and Tammy, that the PPP be Tammy and Jean. And otherwise our committee assignments uh, will uh, remain the same for now, though we're gonna have to uh, look at budget and investment. Okay, we need to elect officers to replace Bob Pam. Uh, I would like to nominate Lee Edwards. Is there a second? Second. Okay, this is to be the treasurer of the Board of Trustees. Any other nominations? Okay, uh, in favor say aye, Tammy. Aye. Thank you, Farah. Aye. Uh, Lee? Aye. Thank you, and Austin votes aye. For vice treasurer, uh, Farah Amin, uh, is there a second to that motion? Second. Thank you. Okay, any other nominations? Okay, on the question of far as Vice Chair Lee, I mean Vice Treasurer Lee. Uh, aye. Tammy? Aye. Far? Aye. And Austin votes aye. Thank you, that is great. Thank you for serving. The next item is to review and discuss a proposed memorandum of uh, agreement with the town concerning uh, what we will do to um, move forward with the redesign work that needs to be done on the proposal to renovate and expand uh, the library. The proposed uh, motion is in your packet. I need someone to move it. So move. Someone could just read it. Would the mover of the motion please just read it out loud? To approve amendment number three, memorand memorandum of an agreement between the town manager and the board of library trustees. Thank you, Tammy. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay. Now that that motion, which is to approve this memorandum of uh, agreement with the town, is now open for uh, open for discussion. Any 
uh, questions or discussion. Tammy. Um, I know when we have talked about this, um, that there is a risk, um, but, and I am concerned um, because we are dependent on the, um, the endowment. Uh, however, I don't see any alternative given the predisposition, predisposition of the town at this time. So I think that we need to take this action um, to cover the expenses of the architects to reduce the overall cost of the project. Thank you, Tim. Other, yeah, Lee. I have a, um, a, a question and I, I think maybe it's Sharon, it's for you. Uh, am I right in thinking that the amount here is the sort of outer limit and that it may well be that the fees incurred between now and when the bid comes in will come in quite a bit lower than this? Yeah, um, this total, this 557,000, um, that represents five meetings. It, it includes five meetings. So if there are fewer meetings, um, the money, that amount, that total amount will go down. Okay, because, all right, but it seems to me that I'm looking at a, maybe I'm looking at the wrong version. The amount that's in the library agrees to pay the cost, it's still at the 877 number. No, shall I share my screen? Okay, I was just looking at the wrong version. That's fine. Thank you. That's fine. The Thank memorandum you. of, uh, of proposed memorandum of agreement after doing various recitals says the library agrees to pay the cost of architectural fees currently estimated at $550,700. I'm going to read it. Okay. In order to rebid the project in the fall of 2024, this amount will be added to the library share of the project cost. That references the prior memoranda where it, library share okay. is defined. Good. Second, if the project doesn't move forward in the fall of 2024, the town will not need to return these funds to the library. And these funds will not be applied towards library repairs. Third, all other provisions of the agreements remain in force. So I have a couple of questions, if I may. Sharon, could you just think out loud with us about where the $550,700 is going to come from? Yeah, so let me, so I, I've, done a little history. Um, and so as of June 6, I didn't look at it this morning, but our endowment was valued at $9,259,871.78. Uh, if we subtract this $550,700, it would leave us with $8,709,171. And I am working with our investment managers on how, how best to withdraw this money, whether at once or over time. Um, so at, at, as a reminder, uh, um, this, this is not a, a permanent reduction. Uh, the capital campaign will continue to uh, raise money and, and we will make the endowment whole again. But because our draw is based on a trailing 12-quarter tra average, a reduction of this small size, um, it's all relative, uh, it, it doesn't actually have much of an effect at all. So, for example, our FY24, our current uh, budget was based on an endowment of $8.2 million. Uh, back in the June, back in June of 2022, um, and that gave us a draw of $351. 501. Um, that was a 4% draw rate. Um, so, so then I went back, uh, I, I looked at the endowment, the, the draw, uh, and, and what the balance was since FY05. Um, and the lowest the balance went to was 6.7 million. That was an FY09 when the trustees at the time switched from passive to active management. And, and so that was a, a permanent cut of 1.7 million. Um, but the endowment rose again. And then the next time the endowment 
uh, dropped uh, was in FY12. And that's when the Woodbury funds were, were separated from the endowment. So that wasn't, that really wasn't a loss, but the endowment kept rising. And then in FY16, there was another uh, drop in value. And at the same time, we were also taking a 4% draw rate. Um, and so that was our lowest annual draw since 05. Um, well, I'm sorry, since my time in, in uh, October of 2011. And that draw was 293000 I guess all of this is to say that $300,000 is, is what we aim for to maintain level services. And because our fundraising efforts uh, have increased exponentially, thanks to the friends, we, we don't need a $400,000 annual draw anymore. Um, and it, that's what we were taking 10 plus years ago. Uh, so, so again, you know, coming full circle back to this, this cut draw withdrawal of 550,000, it really, it doesn't have much of an impact at all. So may I ask you a couple of questions? It, it, I would not describe it as a small withdrawal from the endowment. Um, half a million dollars out of a $9 million fund is not, in my view, small. That's one thing to say. The second thing to say is um, because our endowment is uh, partially in equities, the value of equities goes up and down. So we happen to be, uh, you know, a kind of run up um, in the stock market. So we don't know what the value of that endowment is going to be from, you know, month to month. Something could happen, the market tanks. Now we are, I would say, relatively conservatively invested in terms of the percentage in equities, domestic and international, and the percentage in more fixed income vehicles. However, $9 million in the endowment, Sharon, how much of that money is restricted as to its use? I do, I, I don't, I don't have that number in front of me. It seems to me it's, well, I don't have that figure in front of me. I don't so, want to assign an adjective to it because it. Yep. Yeah. So one thing that we need to remember is that some part of our endowment is restricted. It's not all just we can use it for whatever purpose. I do not believe that that inhibits what we are proposing to do, but we need to remember it. Um, okay. Uh, if we went back to 2005, what was the draw rate on the endowment, Sharon? Do you, you remember? I, I don't have that figure in front of me. No, I only have the balance. So another way that we can think about what we're doing is in light of the draw rate. We lowered the draw rate, which I believe was above 5%. We lowered it first, I think, to 45 and then even lower to 4%. So we have right now what I would describe as a relatively low draw rate. We might want to, if we have to, though I understand what you're saying, uh, think about adjusting the draw rate. Now, what you pointed out, we need to remember, which is that the, we think about this not at one point in time, but over, as you say, a 12-month rolling average. So the, the impact of uh, taking funds out of the endowment will be felt, assuming that there were no change in the value of the endowment, will be felt in subsequent budget cycles. Um, right. How will we actually do this? Meaning, we will need to establish some fund that is liquid so that we can pay bills as they come in. Do you yet have an idea, Sharon, how we would go about doing this? Uh, uh, so I, I would think electronically, uh, similar the way we do now. I mean, will we establish another account? For example, a money market account. Oh, it- at, Transfer it, funds from, you know, sell some equities or sell some of the, and move those funds into 
um, a, a, a money market or some kind of account like that. Correct, yeah. And then the bills will be paid in the normal ways that library bills get paid. Will they be sent to the library or will they be sent to the town and then forwarded to the library? Uh, it, uh, those details have to be worked out still. Okay. Now, let's just imagine for, for a moment that uh, the project does not go forward. Uh, the library has an obligation pursuant to another memorandum of agreement to spend $1.8 million on repairs over a three year, after a three year period, I believe. So we would have committed uh, $2.3 million to let's say the effort to renovate and expand the library plus what we will need to expand if we don't renovate and expand, right? On the HVAC system or on the roof or on the fire suppression system. So we need to remember that we are adding to our already existing obligation if the project does not go forward. Uh, so we might be facing in a few years a situation in which we're needing to draw on the endowment or some other source, for example, loans from a bank, uh, to finance these um, to finance these obligations. Okay, other other questions. Lee, this isn't so much a question, but it's just a sort of caveat or parens to add to what you say. Um, if the project does not go forward, then the capital campaign committee will, of course, look at what is in the capital campaign account system to see exactly what will remain okay. for the library to use should the project fail. And I, I don't know the details, obviously, but it's a lot more than nothing. So that would help offset the risk here. Uh, right, but you don't know what that figure. You don't know what that figure is. I, 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 I do not. Right. I mean, I can tell yeah. you some of the ins and outs, I, but it's yeah. Uh, I no. assume at this point that's not a figure that we can really know because no, we're... no, it's that's exactly exactly okay. Far. Um, this is to Lee. Lee, I'm sure. I mean. I'm just wondering, have there been any conversations with donors about should the project not go forward, whether they would be interested in redirecting their donations toward repair only? We are starting to have some of those with the, people have made, you know, a lot of people, even at the high end, have simply made pledges. And then mm -hmm. it, a lot has to do with, to some extent, the sources from which people directed their uh, contribution to the library. And, uh, and in some of those instances, it's very likely that funds will remain that can be redirected. But I don't have the details and I don't see that yet. Okay. That's about as much as I think I can say now, but that's what, that's why I brought it up. I mean, it's some money, that individuals have given as mm -hmm. opposed to pledged, uh, it's overwhelmingly likely to remain and people are overwhelmingly likely to say the library should decide how they want to use it. Well, we don't really know that, right? And no, we don't. That, uh, we don't. I'm, I'm just worried about... Um, I think from the point of view of what we need to do, we need to... Uh, plan on the basis that people have contributed to a project and they may all say project doesn't go forward. We've got other uses, other charitable uses of our funds. We've asked people to contribute to a project. They, they, they may or may not uh, leave funds 
for the disposition of the library. I think from our point of view, we should plan as if they are not going to. And we should understand that if the project does not go forward, the library obligation will be in the range of $2.3 million. $500,000 of that will have been paid out. It'll be gone from the endowment. 1.8 will be pledged towards repair. Again, as I recall, it was a three year period. So uh, we need to be satisfied that with those obligations, we can maintain what we're doing in the library. I think what Sharon has presented suggests that we can maintain what we're doing in the library with an endowment, um, take 2.3 out of the nine, that would be roughly 6.7. That was what Sharon said it was back in 2005 or whatever. That would mean that to get $300,000 out of that endowment, assuming we didn't raise another dollar for it, we'd have to raise the draw rate in order to produce $300,000 a year for the library budget. Again, recognizing that endowments go up and down and the value goes up and down. Uh, and what I'm understanding from Sharon, and you can please, if this is not right, is that Sharon is confident that even in the worst case scenario, which is the one that I've just described, what we do in the library can continue to be done. Is that right, Sharon? Correct. Okay. So are there any other questions about this, this proposed memorandum of agreement, Farah? This is actually another quick question for Lee. Um, Lee, do you think once we sign this, and now that we they've granted the extension that you can the campaign can go back to full swing or do you have to wait till the fall no no we're absolutely once the memo once the town has signed off uh once we approve and then the town approves our approval or mm -hmm. paul bachelman approves our approval or whoever then we intend to go back to say you know we're we're on and it's really important that we maximize the five months between now and when the bid comes in to get as as many statements of intention as we can okay. yes because that'll help us to deal with the bid whenever it comes in to say we how much we have in the kitty against whatever the bid is Right. So, okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. One other thing to say, I um, we now know from the MBLC meeting that other libraries have had this experience, and that when they have gone out to bid, they have received lower bids the second time. So, not only were we told that possibility by our uh, OPM and by our architects, but we heard that in the MBLC meeting, that other libraries ran into this problem, they went forward to rebid the project. The other thing is, um, I think it is important to say that uh, the value engineering cuts that we are proposing to make will not adversely affect the program that we laid out that was endorsed by the MBLC, the National Endowment for Humanity, our congressmen, our state legislatures, state legislators. And again, the MBLC had to make that determination, if you will, before granting this extension, had to be assured, and we assured them. 
So the vision of a library that is um, accessible to all um, users, the vision of a library that has an adequate team space, the vision of a library that has um, an um, adequate, adequate children's space, a vision of a library that has adequate space for ESL and reading rooms that we do not now have, and a vision of a library that provides space for the one of the great treasures and resources of our time, the Civil War tablets, uh, and that provides adequate facilities for special collection, and a vision of a library that leaves our library um, in much better shape than it is now in terms of the buildings, that vision will be realized. Even with the value engineering cuts that we are um, that we are proposing that we are proposing to make. So voting for this memorandum of agreement allows us, hopefully, to go forward uh, with the redesign and value engineering uh, with. Uh, the idea that we are maintaining the program of the library, the vision of what the library needs and what the community needs out of its library. Tammy. Um, I attended the MBLC meeting in Palmer and it was quite clear from the staff of the MBLC and the commissioners that um, the MBLC does not mandate what a renovated library looks like either on the exterior or the interior finishes. They were quite clear about that, even though there had been some comments about the changes that we had suggested making in the design. So I think it's important to emphasize that it's the programmatic needs of a library that the MBLC are supporting, not what it looks like um, either on the exterior or the interior. They were very clear about that. Well, we are concerned with what it looks like. And the Jones Library Building Committee is concerned with what it looks like. So those concerns remain in front of us and the, and the building committee. Uh, all I was trying to say is that as we go forward with the redesign and value engineering, we need to keep in mind that uh, we are renovating and expanding a library to meet the needs of the community for decades to come. And that those needs, those needs will be accommodated well and met well by what we are proposing to do, even after the value engineering cuts. Okay. I, I didn't mean to suggest that we didn't, we don't care what the library looks like. I was just explaining the MBLC's viewpoint. Okay. Any other discussion or question about the proposed memorandum of agreement? Okay, I'm going to just read it again. The library agrees to pay the cost of architectural fees currently estimated at $550,700 in order to rebid the project in the fall of 2024. This amount will be added to the library's share of the project cost. Two, if the project doesn't move forward in the fall of 2020, the town will not need to return these funds to the library. These funds will not need to be applied towards library repairs. Three, all other provisions of the agreement remain in force. And remember, there are various recitals at the top of the, those um, those agreements. Okay. Lee Edwards, how do you vote? Aye. Farah? Aye. Tammy? Aye. And Austin votes, um, Austin votes yes. Thank you. And thank you to the library director for her good work in... Um, in uh, moving the memorandum of agreement forward. Uh, in the remaining time that we have, I'd like to go to um, item 6D, uh, which is the uh, PPP committee and its um, motion. Tammy. Yes, um, the personnel planning and policy committee um, moves to approve the library director annual evaluation form stated June 10th, 2024. Um, just as a point, these are basically the same forms that have been used in the past. The main change is during the trustee form, 
when um, the specific goals established for this fiscal year are included. Uh, but the forms otherwise are the same as we've used in the past. Is there a second to that motion? Second it. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion of the evaluation forms? Um, Tammy, could you just remind us of the process going forward? Okay. Um, once these forms are approved, um, I first will send them out to the, the board for, um, for filling out the forms for the Board of Trustees. I also send um, a different form to um, Paul Bockelman and uh, Melissa Rodesi Walker, the um, uh, HR director. Um, I work with Matt Berube in the library. He puts the public form on the website and um, they can either be replied to him or if people want to print it out and put it in a box um, in the library. There is a separate form for the staff and I work with Tashi in the office and she um, distributes the form to the staff. They can be returned to me by email or they can be filled out um, in a paper form and put in a box. And once the deadline, I establish the deadline where these are returned, I then get the forms. I have the forms from the trustees I uh, have the forms from the town and uh, Tashi supplies me with the, the staff forms and Matt Berube prints out any uh, public forms. And then I collect, they, they give me the um, evaluation forms that have been put in the boxes in the library. And then I work on, on doing, you know, collating all of these and, um, providing a, a draft report. And I also meet with Sharon to go over specific comments, suggestions um, that people have made. And just remind us, when uh, is this process usually complete? Okay, um, there is a, a, a timetable on the, the motion um, that uh, um, if we approve them today, um, I hope to send them out within the next week. Um, and then hopefully have them back um, by sometime in July and work them through July and August. And I will present to the PPP a draft summary. And then hopefully in September, um, I will bring that to the board. And in the interim, I will also meet with Sharon as well. Um, right. Okay. It, it's Any a pretty questions? involved process. It, it's time consuming, but it's very rewarding. And I certainly appreciate everybody. Uh, last year, I did, we did it in August and I, I got about 12% fewer replies. So I'm really happy to have these approved now so I can move forward. Right, any other discussion of the value? Yep, yeah. Farah. Not a discussion. I just want to say, Tammy, I know how involved this is and time consuming. And if you need any help. Okay, thank you, Farah. The member of the PPP, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Anything else before we vote? Okay. On the motion to approve the forms, Lee Edwards. Uh, approved. Yes. Farah. Yes. Tammy. Yes. And Austin votes yes. And again, with with thanks, uh, Tammy. Um, under PPP, there is another agenda item: uh, the Jedi Committee report. Um, I have nothing to report since the last meeting because we're meeting uh, next week. Okay. All right. We asked um, the, that the Buildings and Facilities Committee begin to think about uh, what we would do if this project does not move forward, so-called Plan B. And I wonder, Farah or Sharon, if you want to tell us a little bit about uh, where we are in uh, considering a plan B if the project does not move forward. Sharon, you want to go ahead? Because I saw that your proposal was in the packet. So yeah. That's it on the meeting. 
so we'll we'll talk about it more uh we started talking about it last buildings and facilities we've been talking about this for several years now uh but george and i put together a more a, a more polished list a more realistic list it is it is in the packet and so what we were aiming for was completion of a feasibility study and a, a repair of something each fiscal year um so yes if this building project doesn't move forward we will go through the jcpc process uh just like we were doing you know up until the building project um, and so for the first year, we would look to hire an architect for a feasibility study for the replacement of the HVAC system. Um, and we were also looking at, um, because the need is immediate, it would be moving the asbestos in the children's room and uh, replacing the fire alert system. So that would be within the first uh, uh, request year. Um, and then the next year, hopefully, we would be able to actually spend that money to hire uh, hire the architect to perform the feasibility study for um, the atrium, the roof, and the, the remaining asbestos abatement, as well as the actual work being done on the HVAC. And then move forward to the third year, hopefully we would be able to replace the atrium, the roof, perform the abatement and, and replace windows. And again, all of this, you know, the further we get out in years, the more of a, uh, who knows, you know, where the world is going to be in three years, where the town is going to be in three years, where the library is going to be in three years. So this is just a, a, a snapshot, a plan of what we're thinking about now. Um, so much of it will depend on what kind of funding the town has and where the fire department uh, project is, where the DPW project is. So then the next feasibility study the following year, we're looking at uh, for ADA accessibility, replacing the, the small elevator in the front and, and repairing and making ADA accessible the patron and staff bathrooms. We also have to replace the burglar alarm system. So then going out the next year, that's when we would start actually addressing the ADA accessibility, doing the small elevator and, and fixing the bathrooms, making that, them handicapped accessible. And then the following year, we start to move exterior. Uh, we have to deal with a tree that's growing into ours and the fire department's sewer line. We have to repair the driveway, um, replace the landscaping. And then the following year uh, would be when we actually cut down the tree and replace the sewer line and did the driveway repair based on the feasibility study that we funded the year before. And then uh, the, the final blurb that we've highlighted is installing uh, signage, new signage, both interior and exterior, doing the new carpeting and repairing and painting the walls. So that's kind of what we're looking for over the next decade. Um, what's not accounted for in any of this is a teen space or, or dealing with the safety issues that we have in the basement. Um, and again, anytime we open up any of the walls for an extended period of time, if the library has to close, um, the, it, we'll have to move. The, the staff will have to move. We can't, we can't work in this building while it's being abated. So that's, that's the list. That's what we're talking about in buildings and facilities. Great. Tammy? Um, there's no cost associated here with moving. Correct. No, that that would be within each individual. It depends on the project. You know, once we hired that architect for that feasibility study, it's th just they would... two different asbestos in two different years. Seems like that should all be done at once. OK, thank you. Other questions about this? Um, yep, Farah. Sharon, so just based on conversation we had at buildings and facilities a few weeks ago that you know there were two two options and different phases so would we have the town look would we have would we try to look toward the proposal where there's only one move out of the library as opposed to twice because that that seems the smarter plan right so i mean 
all I can do. So based on what I've heard, uh, it is unlikely that the town is going to fund, you know, $15.8 million worth of work in one lump sum. Um, the, the town has made it clear that we would we would fall down to the bottom of the priority list so that they could take care of uh, other needs and then we would kind of sneak in year after year with you know getting pieces done and um uh but certainly if you know we went to jcpc and and suddenly they wanted to do something else then we would we would pivot um mm -hmm. it, it really would depend on what the town finances and and town you know priorities were that any given year okay thank you we Maybe I should understand this, Sharon, but I, again, I'm not quite sure. How does the going to JCPC dovetail with our commitment to provide the 1.8 million within three years of whenever the project is not going forward? Sure. No, that's a it's an awesome question. So, so for the first year, um, hi. Uh, hiring an architect for feasibility study, doing the fire alert sprinkler system and doing the abatement for the children's room. I don't know that may fall within that 1.8. So we wouldn't even need to go through, go to JCPC. We, we could just take care of that. Um, we would start to dovetail once we start spending down that 1.8. Um, and I don't know at what point we'll hit that, but then we'd have to go to JCPC and say, Hey, you know, we've hit, we've hit 1.4. And, and so now we know that the next step in repairing the building is going to cost more than 0. 0.4. So we I, need you to kick in. That yeah, that, that was and a, a sort of follow up question. Do you have in your head, the ballpark figure for how much needs to be spent within X number of years to get ADA compliance to kick yeah. in? Yeah, so I did look that up. So according to the FY24, the um, the property card on the town's website, the building is worth 23 million, a little, a little over 23 million. Um, so 30% of that is 6.9 million. So once we hit $6.9 million worth of repairs to this building over a three-year period, that's when a full ADA kicks in. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Other questions about this um, report? So, Sharon, can you just say a little bit more about next steps? So, what we want to we want to do is be prepared if uh, um, the renovation expansion project does not go forward. You want to be prepared to move as expeditiously as possible uh, into plan B. So what is the work that you and the people and the buildings and facilities committee need to do over the next period of time um, to actually get ready to pivot uh, if the uh, renovation expansion plan. I mean, this looks to me like a good first step in kind of laying out what the steps might be. Uh, what what would be next? Uh, so I wouldn't recommend spending any money until uh, you know until we know in the fall. But what we what George and I would do is we could um, put together an actual RFP to hire an architect for the feasibility study uh, for the HVAC. So that won't cost anything. That would just be you know me and George uh, doing the work. Same thing with replacing the fire alert system. We can get bids for that, for example. Um, yeah, so uh, George and I just putting down, uh, you know, on paper so that, you know, the day the project doesn't move forward, we can go right into distributing the paperwork. So yeah, I think this is great. I really appreciate the work that you've done. Um, I, I look forward to more conversations in buildings and facilities where we actually drill into this and look uh, carefully at this timeline to see whether or not this is actually um the way one would uh the way one would move forward so any other questions about what we've just heard 
So I need to apologize. I need now to leave the meeting. And because of my leaving, uh, we will no longer have a quorum. So what I'm going to propose to do is that we adjourn the meeting, that we lay over things that we were not able to get to at this uh, meeting to our next meeting. And again, with apologies. So I'm going to just say it was good to see you. Thank you for the work that you've done. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time. The meeting Thank is you, adjourned. Austin. Thank, Thank you, Austin. Austin. Meeting is adjourned.